Hey, what's up? Uh, seems like I'm on a roll here. Uh, December is really slow for me, so uh, I'm having fun. I might be overdoing it a little bit, I think, because I'm pretty excited about uh, enjoying this process. Um, okay, so, so far the theme of everything that I've done has been uh, metal, metal core, um, prog rock and stuff, and uh, we all, I think, are getting on to the same fun stuff about polyrhythms, and uh, without a doubt, the intense musicianship of everybody thus far. And I want to continue this, but I want to also bring in um, either artists, musicians, or bands from all around the world. And one in particular is a band called Disperse. Now, Disperse is from Poland, from what I read. I did, I did do a little research, and I'm familiar with the guitar player. His name is uh, Jakob Zajtecki, I believe. You know me and how I pronounce things. I'm gonna, I'm, I, I expect your comments. Um, I know this guitar player because every once in a while I go to this uh, guitar, online guitar, I forget what it is, where you can choose, you know, a style of music and stuff and then you can go through the teachers and if you like the teachers, you know, they show you a little YouTube video of, of them playing, you, you buy this package, right? And I saw this one on this uh, guitar player and he looked pretty young and I just have never seen anybody with the skill set that he has, you know, that purple level I talk about, third eye purple, for those of you who ask me all the time. Uh, of musicianship, but he has this incredible soul to his playing. Um, and so as I was looking around and doing a little more research, I wanted to, sh I wanted to bring him to you because I also know he's really huge uh, with some of the stuff I've seen on his more recent stuff with polyrhythmic type of writing and playing. Anyhow, uh, I did more deep diving into Disperse and then my friend told me about uh, this one project that I'm about to bring you a song from. Uh, it's called Enigma of Abode, and I I do not lie. I did listen to about 40 seconds up front because I didn't know I was going to get myself into it. And once I heard it, I, that's why I look a little scurvy right now. I'm getting my cans. I'm getting everything set up here because I want to bring this to you. This is now 2013, and his whole body of work uh, has has kind of you know evolved from there. Um, uh, there are some links below. I'll get to that at the end of the song. Let's just get this going here. Uh, this is dispersed from Poland. And um, this, this, this is going to be, I think this is going to be really super cool. All right. Oh, by the way, I do still get uh, comments about my cans. There's some very standard issue uh, AKG uh, 240s uh, with open backs. There's a link below if you want to just take a look at what it is. Um, earphones are very personal, so I wouldn't say, yeah, go out and get one. But I'm just, I'm, I'm answering your questions here. All right, let's do this. All right. I got to stop there. Um, so I think we can agree. This is some really intense polyrhythmic uh, arrangements. Um, and I think we can already get, agree that the bass player, the drummer, and uh, Jakob is um, just at that level. Uh, the beginning of the song did start off with some sequence. Now there's, um, there's a percussive sequence. It kind of sounds like a... Uh, kind of a muted shaker kind of a thing. Uh, and then there's an arpeggiated um, tonal sequence. You know, I, that, I don't know that that's what it is. That kind of set the stage uh, for me for what was to come in the sense that these guys um, obviously do venture into uh, layering in the production, which is adding tracks or, or, or adding, you know, uh, whether it's a rhythmic or an ambient support to their tracks. Uh, which is great. I did notice in some of uh, Jakob's um, 
some of his production from things that I have seen from him. He does like to work with synths and stuff, uh, modules as, as, as an assist, but definitely by no stretch of the imagination is it anything more powerful than his guitar playing. Uh, so I'm going to take it back a little bit. Um, once, once I get a couple minutes into it, I'll go ahead and stop just so we can get into some good vibes here. Here we go. Uh, when I came back into the track, uh, there's obviously some layering going on in there. There's the, um, you know, the power split of the crunch. Uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, what engineering technique they could have used there. It could be a, it could be a plug-in. Uh, you know, the everything, whether it's a hard um, hardware like an axe, um, you know, guitar processor to to software plugins, uh, they can, you know. Uh, model a stereo split which is multiple mic cabinets when you're doing it you know uh, the organic way don't know that that's what's going on there did hear another guitar rhythm in there I heard some layering in there which is great you need that support speaking of layering um, what we just went through with uh, this last five minutes there is uh, what I would call an agitated percussion sequence going on in the back what I mean by agitated Instead of it being something like it was like more like and what that does, in my opinion, and how I've used that in the past, is if I have used that type of a percussion in the back, in a subtle way, the drummer could be a little more expressive, uh, doing what he wants to do with the cymbal rides and all the other nuances uh, as he's playing the drums. It doesn't mean that the drummer's not capable of doing that it's just you know if you have the co if you have the opportunity and the ability and if you know you can pull it off live you can you add certain things to it I, th I thought that was a really nice addition in production there it was just to have that there once again very very subtle it's on you know my right side of the cans if you, if you have headsets and you listen to this uh, so let's go back into this next section here back a couple here we go spacey section here okay something else I want to add really quick uh, listen to that again when you get the opportunity and uh, there is a piano back there uh, or a mallet instrument uh, it just sounds like a piano with a you know really deep reverb in there and you can kind of hear it just loosely holding a beautiful melodic pattern in the background I thought that was really super cool all right let's see what this is all about all right
what a section. Holy bacockin. Jeez, I don't know. I got. I just got to wrap my head around that for a second. There's. It, first of all, it was beautifully produced, very ambient, and then I guess stepping into a prog rock jazz fusion style. This was. This was what I heard from when I first heard some of the guitar players uh, Jacob's uh, videos when he was younger. I said, How can this guy have so much soul in this playing, but yet still really be a dedicated uh, metallurgy kind of guy? Uh, that was beautiful. Now, something that I noticed that I think you guys are going to dig. At the very beginning of this of his chord progressions, once again, I can't say that I know. I'm only trying to trust my ears here. He used voicings in his chord changes that allowed this very long reverb that carried out. We call that sometimes it's an infinite kind of a setting, or maybe it has about a six second fade of a reverb. But he chose voicings in his chords that he was playing so that as, as those notes rang out in the reverb, his next chord and those voices would, would complement what's tailing off here. Uh, you know, Eddie Van Halen used to do, you know, when, he, when Eddie Van Halen used to do that uh, solo where he'd turn his volume pot up and down with the delay and stuff, it's purposeful because you know where you are in your, um, in the key that you're playing and what you can bounce off of. This was a beautiful example of that. Um, and then his solo, I mean, come on, you, if you had to have heard those full-on fuji, fuji, fusion, that's like fusion jazz, um, notes that he chose in there. Uh, I, this is, I'm sorry, I'm speechless because I was just beautiful. I'm probably going to listen to this a thousand times because that's how it moved me. So um, what a great example of musicianship. And that is to go with everything that I've reacted to thus far is this level of musicianship that is just insanely talented and uh so here we go we'll take it back a little bit and was so cool okay and last but definitely not least I realized I got so excited about the musicianship the vocals were just perfect for this song I love the fact that this vocalist um, his power wasn't necessarily sh shown in a grit in a voice in, a, in an approach in singing that I we've been kind of used to hearing in at least the um, music I've been reacting to. I loved his tone. His tone was fantastic. It was such a perfect uh, marriage of power and his voice where it was, where it was sitting in the mix and his particular tone really, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? God, I hate getting old. I'm having such a brain fart here. Uh, complimented the arrangement, even though he is the lead singer. Um, I really loved his voice, and so and but that last though, this last little mix, I would have loved to have heard. I I don't know. I would have loved to have heard maybe those higher notes pushed out a little more in the mix because I know he was hitting them. I can hear him. Um, the engineering, of course, was masterful. Stand by. Let me turn this off. Um, the engineering, of course, was great. You don't you don't engineer at this level without having a crazy skill set. Uh, so that's um, that's uh, disperse from Poland. Uh, links below on Jakob, uh, Disperse, and um, also I'm going to add Jakob's personal, uh, oh no, I just said that, didn't I? Uh, check out Jakob's um, 
personal YouTube page because he's got a video of him when he was 16, 17, 15, all the way up to where he is now, you know, 10 years later, whatever. And you could see his trajectory of where he's going and how he already had a particular skill set and how he's evolving. It's the same thing like Tim Henson. I'm starting to do homework on Tim and it's amazing journey on where he's coming from and his band and his friend, uh, the other guitar player, all the way to where they are now. And for both those guitar players, I am so white knuckling to see what the future, what they're going to bring in the future, because this is, this is, uh, this is as progressive, I believe, as we can get, not them into themselves, but I'm just saying where music is going to, where musicians are pushing their levels on, on in all genres and stuff. Anyhow, I go on much longer than I should. Thanks for hanging out um, and, and bearing with me. If you're still with me, say you're still with me. <laughs> Give me some hope. Anyhow, thank you guys very much, and uh, all right. Aloha. <laughs>